Hello and welcome to my talk. The title of this talk is Noise and the Frontier of Quantum Supremacy. This is joint work with Adam Boland and Stanford, Bill Feverman at Chicago, and Seth Landau at UC Berkeley. Also see related talk by Kondo, Mori, and Movasa. The motivation of this talk comes from the quantum supremacy experiments, which are among the most exciting recent developments in the field of quantum computing. By now, we have several claimed experimental demonstrations of quantum supremacy, including the random circuit sampling experiment by Google using superconducting qubits, and the boson sampling experiment by USTC using linear optics. These experiments aim to use these prototype quantum computers to solve a computational task that is hard for classical computers. However, the complexity of these tasks are still not fully understood and the gap still remains between theory and experiment. In this talk, we will show improved complexity theoretic evidence that these tasks are hard for classical computers. The computational tasks defined by quantum supremacy experiments can be understood as sampling from the output distribution of random quantum experiments. Here, the output distribution is denoted by the black curve, where x-axis is the output string and y-axis is the probability. Previous work considers a theoretical model where the experiment achieves high fidelity. Then the goal is to prove hardness of sampling with small total variation distance from the ideal distribution, which cor corresponds to the blue curve. We refer to this model as the ideal regime. And later we will discuss actual experiments, which are in a much more noisy regime. However, Previous results cannot prove hardness of sampling, even in this idealized setting, because they are not sufficiently robust to additive imprecision. Next, we will introduce our first result in the ideal setting, where we significantly improve the robustness of prior hardness results. More formally, in the ideal regime, the input is a random quantum circuit as shown on the left hand side and the outputs are samples from the output distribution of the random quantum circuit as shown on the right hand side. The goal is to show that it is hard to sample from a distribution that is very close to the ideal distribution of the random quantum circuit with for example 1% total variation distance. To show evidence for hardness of sampling, the standard approach in previous work is to reduce to proving robust hardness results for computing the output probability, which follows from Stockmeyer's approximate counting. More specifically, the goal is to prove sharp P hardness of approximating the output probability of random circuits or random linear optical networks to additive imprecision on the order of the average of probability, which for random circuits is one over two to the n, where n is the number of qubits. Here, I use an arrow to show the progress towards the goal for the robustness. If we can reach the goal, we will prove hardness of sampling in the ideal regime. In previous works, as shown on the arrow, they are only able to tolerate a tiny amount of additive imprecision. Our first result achieves an exponential improvement of the robustness and gets much closer to the goal, although a small gap remains to reach the goal. Here's our first result, which shows improved robustness in the ideal regime. First, for random circuit sampling in the general case with n qubits and n gates, B 
BFNV showed a tiny amount of robustness with a large polynomial in the exponent. And later, Movasa improved the robustness to x minus O m cube. We improved this exponent to only m log m. And this result was also independently achieved by KMM21. For constant depth circuits, we can replace m with n. And in this case, our result is n log n in the exponents, which almost reaches the goal up to a log n factor in the exponents. For boson sampling with n photons and n square detectors, previous result by Aronson Arkhipov showed a small amount of robustness. And we improved this to six n log n where we hide some higher order terms for simplicity. And the goal is n log n. Note that for boson sampling, our result is actually tied up to constant factor in the exponents. And this is why we explicitly calculated the constant. Interestingly, we use essentially the same proof techniques for both problems, but the result for boson sampling is tighter. Recall that in the previous ideal regime, our goal is to prove hardness of sampling from a distribution that is very close to the ideal distribution. However, in actual experiments, we observe fidelity that decrease exponentially as system size scales due to lack of error correction, which we call the high noise regime as denoted by the red curve for example, in Google's random circuit sampling experiment, they observed that the optical distribution of their experiments converges to uniform very quickly. And they reported only 0.2% fidelity for their largest experiments. In general, we still lack hardness evidence in the high noise setting, where we only observe a tiny deviation away from uniform along the correct direction. To capture the noise behavior in experiments, here we consider a new computational model in the high noise regime. The input is a random quantum circuit, as well as a fixed noise model with constant noise rate as denoted by the blue dots. And the goal is to sample from the exact output distribution of the noisy circuit. Here, a natural question is, is it hard to sample from the noisy distribution? Or is it hard to compute the output probability of noisy circuits? Fundamentally, here, what we are really asking is, is there any signal of hardness in these highly noisy distributions? This model is closer to the actual experiments in the sense that it reproduces the behavior of exponentially decreasing fidelity and convergence to uniform as shown by these works. In this high noise setting, it is unclear if there is any hardness in these tiny signals that deviates from uniform. In this case, surprisingly, our result shows that even these exponentially small signals away from uniform are still hard to compute. Our result can be understood as partial evidence in support of Google's intractability claim. More specifically, we show that it is sharply hard to compute the output probability of noisy random quantum circuits within additive imprecision x minus O m log m, which has the same robustness as our result in the ideal regime. Given the fact that the noisy distribution converges to uniform exponentially quickly in circuit depths, 
This means that we cannot improve our robustness much further for deep circuits. This is simply because our hardness result needs to rule out the uniform distribution, which is trivial to compute and already very close to the noisy distribution. Having introduced both of our results, next we will give a brief overview of our proof techniques. In general, our proof follows a similar structure as previous work, where the main effort is to develop a worst to average case reduction. That is, assuming we have an algorithm for computing the output probability of random circuits, we would like to construct an algorithm for computing the output probability of any circuit. We can do so because of the existence of polynomial structure in both quantum circuits as well as permanence. Therefore, as we know that the bottom task is hard, we conclude that the top task is hard as well. Here's the proof techniques of our first result. First, following previous work, we reduce the proof of hardness results for random quantum circuits and permanence to polynomial interpolation on noisy data points. Here in the figure, we have an unknown polynomial denoted by the black curve. And we would like to recover its value at x equals one from noisy data points at x close to zero. Here, these red data points can either slightly deviate from the polynomial or they can be arbitrarily wrong as represented by the outliers. This problem is in general ill conditioned as the extrapolation error can grow quickly outside the data interval. In our proof, we develop a robust Burlikan Welsh argument over the reals that allows us to solve this problem. Our proof simplifies previous arguments by using only standard results about polynomials. And we can also tolerate more errors in the data as shown by the outliers. And finally, we significantly reduce the extrapolation error as shown by the blue arrow at x equals one. Combining all these techniques gives us the improved results in the ideal setting. For our second result in the high noise setting, the key observation is that the linearity of noise channels preserves the polynomial structure. Therefore, the same worst to average case reduction techniques also apply to the high noise setting. The final missing piece here is the worst case hardness for noisy circuits. Following an argument developed by Fuji, we showed that worst case hardness holds if the noise is below the error detection threshold. Therefore, our average case hardness result in the high noise setting also holds under the same condition. Here's the high level summary of our results. First, we substantially improve the robustness of prior hardness results in the ideal setting although a small gap remains to show hardness of sampling. Second, we also give initial evidence of hardness with exponentially decreasing fidelity in the high noise setting. Next, we will show that our second result actually implies some barrier to improve the first result. The connection between our ideal and high noise results has some interesting implications. Recall that we have shown earlier that we cannot improve our high noise result much further because of the convergence to uniformity. 
This implies a barrier to improving our result in the ideal setting as well. This is because our two results are proven using similar techniques as we just discussed. And if we can use this type of techniques to improve our result in the ideal setting, then we can also similarly improve our result in the high noise setting, which we know is limited. To conclude this talk, we will list some of the existing barrier results in the ideal regime that prevents us from improving our results further to prove hardness of sampling. As we just discussed, our results can be understood as a noise barrier for improving the ideal result, where we argue that the proof techniques for hardness of sampling must be sensitive to noise, which is different from our current proof. Another barrier was shown by Knapp et al., which we denote as the depth barrier. They showed that random circuit sampling is classically simulable for very shallow depths 2D circuits. And therefore, the proof technique for hardness of sampling must be sensitive to depths. Finally, we recall an early argument of Aronson Arkhipov, who showed that polynomial interpolation techniques cannot prove hardness of sampling, assuming anti-concentration. This argument works similarly for both random circuit sampling and boson sampling. And this is one of the reasons that we couldn't match the same constant as the goal in our current result in boson sampling. An interesting open question is to study whether the noise and depth barrier also apply to boson sampling. Finally, we note that from this table, we see that the result for boson sampling is tighter and we currently also have less barriers. Therefore, boson sampling might be a promising direction to further improve these results towards proving the hardness of sampling. Thank you for your attention.